was a fire there, too. Oh, there's a lot of moves that are happening. I feel like every time before the show is like where the best things get spoken about. And there's some things that we are going to end up sharing with you. I'm not gonna say momentarily, maybe in a little a little while. Once wow. we hash out the details of uh, the big plans that we have some for the summer. Be a part of it. Yeah, some of you may be a part of it. We are planning some very, very big things for the summer. I guess a little bit of a hint is all related to Tea Party, which is coming back very, very soon. We have a lot of equipment that we have to uh, to get fine-tuned. And the biggest thing that we've learned through this Tea Party series is every year that we've done this, this is, I think, year four now that we've been doing it, season four, it's only gotten better, like, every single time. So that's the good thing that we can take away. Like, the first year, we didn't really know what we were doing. The next year, it was more of, like, we found the structure – then we got a GoPro for the cart cam. Then we, now we have a tripod for the camera so we can make the camera a little bit more stable. Some extra things that we're not going to talk about on the show now. You'll just have to see it, wait and see it on the videos. A lot of big things happening. We're always moving. We're always The minds are always churning. Um, welcome into the All Day Everyday Show. This is uh, yet another Thursday. We had a, a, a long weekend last week, so I'm just going to come out and say it. My fault on the clips. Um it was an electric weekend in Atlantic City. I said it at the end of the show last week. We ended up coming back $2,200 richer. <laughs> we sat on the craps table for four straight hours, and we threw dice, nice. and we won. So that was a, a, a great weekend. And now we're almost at another weekend. Maybe get on the course this weekend. We have playoff basketball between the Sixers and the Knicks on Saturday and playoff hockey between the Rangers and the Capitals on Sunday. MSG is going to be popping this weekend. The city of New York is going to be popping this weekend. There's a homestand against the division rivals of Tampa Bay Rays and the Bronx at Yankee Stadium this weekend. New York is going to be absolutely electric and just lock the fuck in. We're going to be talking about all of that and many more things like Caitlin Clark, Jonte Porter, the cardiac Red Wings that found a way to uh, lose on a count that was not theirs. They did everything they could and it didn't matter. We will briefly touch on that. The Arizona Coyotes say farewell to the state of Arizona as they move to Salt Lake City, Utah, as most Arizona Coyote fans are upset, but they are appreciative for the run and they respect it because that team needs to get the hell out of Arizona. We're playing in a college stadium, okay? Um, yeah, and and a lot of Nick stuff and, and some Yankee stuff at the end. We will be building a parlay at the end of the show. Um, and then we did get a, we did receive a call. So if you do want to hit us up and, and get on the show, call the number 302-722-6699. We will be uh, listening and reacting to your call on the show. We will start things from the tippity wait, top. Wait, wait, what are we doing this, by the way? Oh, we got to talk about Scotty too. I want to start with Jonte, okay, and then go to Scotty, and then and then the NBA, and then we'll go. I want to do Caitlin after that, and then the NBA, and then we'll right. go. Um, and then we'll go. Cho. Yeah, and we'll say, do you want to do the part? Do you want to do the parlay with NBA or at the end? Okay. Um. Okay. All right. So this is from we've been using a lot of his stuff. Uh, Joe Pompiano. Uh, let's just check this out. We were talking about John Tay Porter not too long ago. 21K is crazy. And now we're seeing the the finishing touches on the investigation from the NBA. Where NBA investigated John Tay Porter and he placed 13 bets. His smallest bet was $15. The largest bet was $22,000 and his net winnings were $21,965. Porter never bet on games he played. But he did bet on the Raptors to lose, which resulted in a lifetime ban from the NBA. And when we were talking about this a couple weeks ago, Manny had asked this question, which was, do we think anyone in the next decade is going to get banned for betting? As we've seen, multiple NFL players get suspended for betting. And we had the the Otani story. And then in the same week, we had this Jante story. And I said no and clearly was dead wrong because, I mean... That's just foul, right? You bet on your team to lose. I know you weren't playing, but that's just foul. Like, it's like a, it's like I mean, it's an unwritten rule. If you're gonna, I like, see, I'm not, I'm a, I like it. If you're gonna, like, I like, path, you know me, I be posting high stories and shit. I like this kind of shit, bro. I fuck with John T. My kind of, I like it. I don't like that his smallest bet was 15k or 15 dollars, and he only won 21k. Also, his, I, I would have liked the way more if he came out with like 221 million. His NBA, he earnings. made two million. 
Yeah, it was like 2.3. It was his earnings. We crashed out for 21K. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you could... What? 21K. It's just a waste at that you point. Been, you should have been bugging out, bro. If you... I guess he guess I guess obviously the way he was moving, he didn't know he was about to crash out. But I'm a as a lesson to all the rest of the homies that's in the NBA, NFL, MLB, all that, and still betting. Cause I know some of y'all are <laughs> type shit. Put it on the line. If you had the insider info, you know what I would do for insider info, motherfucker. I'm getting out the hood. <laughs> the fuck? You should be twenty. You should be putting twenty one k per bet. Your average ticket should be twenty one k. Yeah, why are we betting fifteen bucks? You know what? That Maybe. had to be the homie. I ain't going to do it No, like I don't that. know. Watch. I think it was like, let me just do a feeler bet and see if I get caught. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm good? Now I can keep going. Yeah, yeah, he probably did do that. We just can't crash out for 21. At least he was up. At least he was up. It says net winning. It's not, let, not net losing. Yeah, there was, there's no... At least, he was, at least he was up. Yeah, it, it does not say anything about losing. He was, he was up. So I guess, man, what's he going to do now? Like, what do you do now? Use your info to keep betting. He ain't banned from FanDuel, they said. You know what I was thinking that he should do now? Like, because how else is, like, how else do you get money? Because, you know, why does he, he's not going to go back to, uh, he's not going to do a 95, right? So make a podcast and just talk about it. Talk about it. Yeah. It'll fizzle out eventually, obviously, because what else are you going to talk about? But wow, what if he's just cool as fuck? Maybe. What if he's just a geek? Like, bro, I think I like, I really like this. It's just not, I really like people that are like shysty, bro. There's something wrong with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I really like that shit, bro. Like, I saw, so, I think he might, he could be like a, I don't know, he could be a funny character, bro. You never know. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Like, I, I, I wish him the best of luck because that just sucks. You had, you had the bag, you lost it. I know it wasn't a bad because he was on a, Three way and it like was like four hundred fifty k, but your huh? his his deal with the Raptors. Like, that's not a bag. Well, I'm saying NBA bag. Oh, like, I'm about to say, boy, he and fucked up a bag. Two point three earnings. Obviously, we know he spent most of it. Like that's his earnings all time. Do we? I don't know that. Where the fuck he living at? He might live with Michael. Maybe you know what? Maybe Michael's gonna help him out. Maybe Michael's the fucking degenerate too. Hey, yeah, I saw some tweets where they were saying, "Hey, uh, Michael should go down too." <laughs> Maybe Michael should fucking interview Jonte. Oh, that's right. He interviewed the fucking Lana Rhodes. Yeah, that's right. Forgot about that. If you interview Lana oh Rhodes, God, get on the podcast. If you interview a porn star, you can interview a fucking gambler. Your brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can. Wow, I wasn't thinking about that. He fucking hires for his production team. Yeah, look, uh, at, look at us. We probably <laughs> would have been able to stop this Lana Rhodes bullshit from happening. No, nah, I think it was. It might have been a good PR move. We talked about it. I know we did say it was a good PR. Move. <laughs> Could have got some good. I know we're just a PGA. <laughs> Back on the PGA tour, a week out of the I Masters. I know he asked. I know he asked. Yeah, he asked. If you ain't asking PJ, you ain't a real shooter. <laughs> we are a week out from the Masters. Scotty Scheffler hoisting another trophy. <laughs> Back at Augusta, and it was just phenomenal to see. Watch him grind it out on Saturday after he gets the double bogey. A couple yeah. holes later. I thought it was rap. Bangs the eagle. You could see. We don't really see a lot of emotion from Scotty, like of course. That. When he hit, when he dropped like that, that eagle, it was like you could see the fist pump and the let's go and all that. Like He was I fired like up. Shit. And then I'm like, okay. He ain't losing now. No. Nope, not happening. And that was on Saturday. So going into Sunday, I, I would be curious to look back and see what the line was for him to win. Plus 175. Yeah, because that would have been the like the bet of the day, bet of the tournament, because you knew at that point he wasn't losing. Like That was just an auto bet. I didn't take it. Um, I had my money elsewhere, and obviously that didn't hit. So obviously hindsight's 2020. Should have looked back to do My dad that. parlayed the Magic and Scotty Sheffield to win the Masters that day. Nice cash out pop. Oh dang! Who, and I was just gonna ask: Did Magic win that day? Yeah, they put the bucks. That's when they put the bucks, like they. Oh, and they had to win the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. Smart man. He runs in the family. Damn. He runs in the family. Right. Yeah. Apparently, it does. Um. Yeah. So My it begs the to email the bucks. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, young boy. You won't have a problem, bro. I'm gonna help you. <laughs> it does pose the question, though, with all this winning that Scotty has done, and Ted Scott making a bag from him as well. That tandem is just unbreakable. How long is this Scotty run going to last? And again, it's not like he's been here forever. Hey. And he's 27. Yeah. 
It's the, he's not been around a long time. Like, I don't know. I mean, we, we've said multiple times already, and everybody knows this as well. Scotty Scheffler is on a completely different planet. Than the field. Than everybody else. Now he can I mean, putt. It, it's unbelievable. Now that he can putt. Like, and I understand, like, these other tournaments, yeah, he's not winning them. But hasn't he come second in the US Open twice? He's placing very high in these Third, tournaments. Yeah. And it, it just again it poses the question like, can anyone stop this man? We go back to season one of full swing and we had this conversation about Brooks Kepka sitting on the couch with his mom, looking at this cabinet of empty spaces wow, great name. where like trophies needed to be. And he said, Well, Scotty's winning another one. And I'm I'm here at home. I missed the cut and I'm watching Scotty this weekend. And that was like two seasons ago. Yeah. And now he's still doing the same thing. I mean, it's like, I know there's not a lot of like heavy golf watchers out there. Maybe people turn it on on Sunday or something like that. I just don't think that this is getting enough appreciation. Bro, I love, like, I'm loving this shit right now. Like, it's so sick. It's, it's, it's not so sick, getting bro. enough appreciation. I know it's getting attention and that's not the right word. It's not it's not that it's not getting enough attention. First, it's not player, enough to, first player to win the players and the masters in the same year since Tiger Woods. Wow. What are we missing? Wow. Like look at the wins he's had and I compare and you brought up a great name Brooks Koepka because when I when I thought about this topic I, I was thinking of names. I was thinking about Jordan Spieth he came out what is he he won when he was what 24 the masters? Came second the year after, choked that essentially. Was, that was 2015. Choked, really? Didn't he win the U.S. Open that year as well? Mm-hmm. PG, or is it just U.S. Open and the Masters that he has? Look at Rory McIlroy. Won everything but the Masters in, like, what, a two, three-year span? Brooks Koepka literally did the same thing. Won four fucking in, like, literally two years. Like, there was a point. I mean, I know there was a point people were saying, is it Rory or the field? There was a point people were for sure saying, is it Brooks or the field? Even some runs that I witnessed, Dustin Johnson and early. I was going to say, I was going to say, there was even points I was going to say, people did with DJ. Is it him or the field? Like, and there was a point. I mean, then this is kind of when I was first starting to watch golf. Do you remember the PGA Championship between Justin Johnson and and um, John Rahm? They had a playoff, and they both hit those insane putts on eighteen. DJ was really good before that. I'm watching that, like, oh, so DJ just he's the guy, like you know what I'm saying. After that. Kyle Moore Cowell rattles off two majors at a very young age. People think he's, I mean, he had a great match, but people think he's going to be the one. And a Ryder Cup specialist. Ryder Cup specialist fizzles out. So, like, how long do you think this, like, even this run lasting two years, two majors is, I mean, two majors is great, but we've seen a lot of players look this, not this good, but really good and fizzle out. Obviously, those people's, I want to I want to know what Brooks, Brooks's odds were back in the day. I want to know what fucking Rory's odds were back in the day. If they were, they were in plus 400, but maybe five, six, seven. How long do you, like, do you give it three more years? I do. I do. Like, how many majors do you think he gets out of this? I'm not saying that it's going to be like this. and No, yeah, yeah. Where it's he's on completely a, a whole different level than everybody else. Mm-hmm. But consistently, we're seeing him in that final group, if not the final two, three groups, on a Sunday every single weekend. Like... I, I don't really know what else to say. Every major. I, it, it's just. You think he's you, a, you think he's gonna get the Grand Slam? Easily, easily. <sighs> he's just he's and it's 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 the confidence level as well. We I learned especially and I've said this multiple times as well. I feel like a broken record, but especially from Full Swing, and it's not this is not even a promo for Full Swing. It's a great show. But just it's a great show. seeing the mental aspect of these guys, you don't really get to my see that part, what favorite, they do. My off favorite the part of the game. Like, that's what you see. You see off the course. You see them talking with the caddies. You see the real mental aspect of it and how they cope with everything off the course. And then when you just see just t- regular TV coverage, it's like just another weekend for Scotty. And his mental game is just so locked in. Like I said, there was little to no emotion out there all mm-hmm. weekend because he's like, I expect to be here. Yeah. Act like you belong. Act like you've been there. And he has. But keep acting like you've been there. 100%. And that's where the confidence factor goes in. And that confidence factor should be able to relate to an everyday golfer like you and me. Yeah. Like, no, bro. Should, you should have that confidence. Scotty, Scotty's, um, so I went and watched, I was watching the, I told you I was watching the 2022 round when I was, I just wanted to watch the beginning when him and Cam were going back and forth and he looked like he was going to fall apart. Scotty looking like he was going to be 
done and over with on three and then chipping in and then just running away with it. That's some shit that I try to keep when I like, I was really like, bro, if you just have, if you just put one swing, like if it's one hole, it could be one swing and your whole round's back together. Another one, Ludwig Obert, when he fucking hits it in the water, comes off the whole cheesing. I'm like this, and it comes back, ends up going even par on the back, saves him, ends up losing probably like 350K, then making it back. I'm like, this is my dog. Like, first major doing that shit. Like, that's the mental game in this shit that I really fucking love and appreciate. And it made me think about one specific player. And because of PJ Championships going back to Valhalla, I looked up the 2000 PJ Championship at Valhalla that Tiger Woods won. He was 24 at that time, and I was just hearing, and it was so funny. He played the first two days with Jack Nicholas. And Jack Nicholas was kind of talking about Tiger in the documentary, and other people were talking about Tiger. I think the guy, I forget his last name, his name was Dunlap. He was like a one shot ahead of Tiger, and he was like, You guys think we're really gonna hold off Tiger Woods for two days? And like, Tiger's 24 at this point, already won the Tiger Slam, which is so dumb. I had to realize how dumb that is. He held every major at the same time. What? <laughs> At like 23. Like, I was like, I, this Scotty shit is amazing. And I hope Scotty goes on the long run. And I honestly think Scotty can, my prediction for Scotty is I really think he can be one of those staple golfers for a long time. Like, I don't want to say he could be Tiger Woods, but you know how Phil was still winning majors for a while? Phil, I, I looked up his Wikipedia, bro. I don't know how he's done for Grand Slam. He's came second in the U.S. Open like eight times. Poor Phil, bro. But I think he could do something like that. I really think that's realistic for him. But Tiger... I've seen some people have that conversation. I not like conversation, but like kind of shit. I'm like, I went and looked at like, like, ain't nobody ever going to touch Tiger. But and that's true. And I, but I think Phil, a Phil s kind of career is definitely in reach, even better. I won't say no to like, like I'm in agreement that he most likely won't touch Tiger. Yeah. What he can touch though is everybody wanted to go against Tiger and everybody wanted to beat Tiger. Mm -hmm. Right now. Everybody wants to go against Scotty because they want to beat Scotty. So it's the same, same narrative. Hell yeah. It's just statistically we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And who knows if he ever yeah. will be. I mean, I mean, he might. It's just really, really it's hard to do. Red. Like, Tiger's insane. Like I went back and looked, bro. Like, how like how do you win? What do you did he do win like back to back opens? One at every, like, every single like like popular big course he's won at. Like, it's almost like every John was like, you want to win this one. Like, even though he came in, like, a little bit, like, you want to win this one, like, he wins it. Like, I just, even, like, when they post the stats of his certain years, when he was, like, the leading winning, like, the leading money winner, he's not, win like, he's winning, like, the RBC, he's winning the players, he's winning the Arnold Palmer, he's winning the fucking WGC match play. Like, he's winning the big Johns. And, like, Sky's kind of doing that, too, but it's just fucking insane how long he was doing it. He was getting hit in the, in the head with a nine iron by a fucking mistress, coming back out, being the leading money winner, like, five years later after that, fucking getting surgeries. Like, it's actually, I'm glad Scotty's doing this because it made me go back and really have to find out what Tiger was on. Because I was like, I hear this conversation happening. I'm like, let me go see. And the older I get, bro, and the more I look back, it is insane. Like, he's not he's, It even makes me appreciate what I was talking about, the speed stuff. Like, speed doing that at 24, being that good at 24. I went back and looked at him. Like, that is fucking wild. It's also wild that it's it was like nine years ago that he was yeah. winning Augusta. Like, yeah. walking, walking through it. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now we're, like, slamming clubs and missing yeah. cuts. and Yeah. They're trying to blame the kid now, which is, I think, uh, yeah, disgusting. It's, just, it's I think that's really pretty, terrible. Yeah, like, that's pretty fucked he, up. He played with Scotty today, <laughs> and he, he shot up. one under with Scotty today. Scotty <laughs> shot two under at RBC. So there's that. That course is sick. Yeah, at Hilton Head down there? Sure that course is sick. All right. Uh, we're going to move now to Caitlin Clark as she was. Drafted number one, like we all knew, everybody knew, to the Indiana Fever. That was very, very cool. Uh, the viewership, we're going to go back to this viewership line. Uh, 2.5 million views for the draft, which was a drastic change. Well over 2 million uh, from the previous years. So it's like the Caitlin Clark movement. But let's not all put it on Caitlin Clark and just all appreciate the year for women's basketball and what it was. Um and she does now uh, sign this lucrative eight-figure deal with Nike. She's going to receive her own signature shoe. It's twenty million plus on that deal. So everyone that was, you know, complaining and bitching about, well, well, you know, her salary is only three hundred ninety thousand. She's making seventy six thousand this year. She's going to be fine. Twenty million plus <laughs> signature shoe deal with Nike. 
should end all debate on whether she made the right financial de- decision going to the WNBA. Obviously, because NIL can keep players there, especially in women's basketball when you're not going to make that much going into the pros. Um, so she was meeting with three brands here from Joe Pompliano, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, um, meeting, uh, featuring an appearance from Steph Curry, and then Nike came over the top with that deal to get that done. So... What Joe says at the end of the tweet here, shout out to Caitlin Clark and her team. It's a massive deal, and everyone in the WNBA will benefit from it, and that's the damn truth. Hey, shout out fucking Nike. Yep. Who I don't know who's running that shit. We lock up Caitlin Clark. We lock up Wemby. Damn! Damn! They ain't good for the next 20 years. Good for Nike, dog. Good for Caitlin Clark, too. She's getting that, like, and she's going to, and, and we think she's getting that bag now. Boy, stop it! Like, yeah, wait till honestly. Uh, boy, stop it! Like, they, they go first of all. First of all, they didn't tell us how long this contract was. Yeah, they gonna have to resign her. Her shoes are going to sell. She's gonna have one of those shoes that, like, you know, like when the when the girls team like all has matching shoes. I guarantee you, the Caitlin Clark ones. Her uh, all across the nation. Her jerseys for Indiana She's Fever her, in every size: small, medium, large, extra large, double XL, all sold out. Yeah, I'm gonna say probably crazy. Bro. What? Bro, I'm trying to tell you, like, you know how Pat Mahomes, when he re-signed, it was like, oh, yeah, when she re-signs, it's going to be like, oh. And we're changing arenas oh. now? Yeah, they're like, doing all, yeah. Like, we're, we're going from instead of a 12,000, you know, of, of the their home stadiums to now going to, you know, T-Mobile Arena or we're going to go play. Um, I saw one today. We're moving a game so we can play where the Wizards play. Yeah, have to. Capital One Arena. I mean, like. At some point, she made me. I, bro, I'm trying to get it. I was looking. I'm trying to see who the closest team to Philly is, and that's all. It's probably in the New York team. I'm like, damn, I got root for New York. Well, it's there. I saw. But I'm like, they got my shorties over there. Like, they got my shorties over there. I saw June seventh so is a Friday where they moved the game to the Capital One Arena. That I mean, that's like two and a half hours away. I would go. I need a team. I think I might be. I might. I might. They did say Philly's gonna is in one of the expansion teams in the next couple of years. Let's go. I need a team. That's what the commission. I might have said. to. Rock, all right, so I'm gonna have to. I might say free agent, but I do fuck with New York, low key. Got Sabrina and Brianna Stewart. Like, yeah, I know. That's a squad. Because she was wearing, she was rocking the Sabrina ones, and then now she's got her own shoe. So now we can start rocking the Caitlyn ones. Sabrina might get more bread too. I think she probably breaded too. Sponsor deals and all that. Yeah, she probably make a bag. She fuck with stuff. True. Well, she's gonna be Caitlyn. Caitlyn Clark is going to be in the NBA All Star three point contest this year. Like we can already stamp that in. We know that's happening. <laughs> Like, let's not get that twisted. All right, briefly over to the uh, – uh, do, wait, do we want to go to NBA here? Yeah. You're right. Um, okay, before we get to the NHL stuff, we are going to head over to the NBA. And our king, as New York Knicks fans, our king this year, one of the only analysts – in all of sports that has been this season alone that has been able to stand on his take about a team for the entirety of the 82 game long season. And that's Kendrick Perkins. So I'm going to sit here and give you my flowers because there's very easy. I'm speaking at you, Kenny the Jet Smith. I'm keep I'm speaking right at you. Talking about Jalen Brunson can't lead the team, he can't be a number 1 guy. He's not never going to be the number 1 guy on the court. And then he has to come back on it in this week's broadcast on TNT. Why? Because he got shelled on Twitter for it. Because he completely switched his take. And then said, I have to come back on it. Well, no, you didn't come back on it. You got bitched out on Twitter and then said, I'm coming back on my take. I'm not saying you're not allowed to switch up. That's not the point. I'm just saying, don't act like you're coming back on it. You made a realization yourself. You didn't make a realization yourself. The only person who was making a realization this entire time was Kendrick Perkins. And then Shaq and Charles Barkley wanted to like shit on him. He's like, oh, I have a... I have a a, a non Hall of Famer trying to t- tell me what to say? Really? It has to go there. That means I can't even say what I want to say then? I'm not a Hall of Famer. Kendrick Perkins in this tweet here. This was be, a. You might end up being a Hall of Famer of the all day outing. That's true. You might, end up, you might end up being a Hall of Famer of that. Yep. So don't don't let don't let him bring you down. Yep. You got to get you down to a little bit of a five or four. Yeah, we got to get there first. But we got to get there first. I see Hall of Fame all day in, in your future. Yep. There's a tweet here on April 17th. Jalen Brunson, really better than Steph now. Golden State should blow it all up this summer. And then Kendrick Perkins replies to that tweet and says, this is a conversation that people aren't ready to have yet, big bro. Shut the fuck up. 
shut the just like this is ba- <laughs> like shut the fuck. I want to say something that's gonna get us canceled so bad about how dumb of a fucking conversation this is. <laughs> how fucking disrespectful it is to put Jalen Brunson in the same conversation as Wardell Stephen Curry. Can we slow down? I'm in agreement with you. Can we slow down? Yeah, I wasn't trying to make it a conversation. Yeah. I was just had to read it though. Are we sure he's better than Trey Young? Are we sure? I'm gonna say yes on that. Are we sure? Trey Young's led an average team in the Evers Conference Finals and won two games in that series. Are we positive? He can't be Cleveland yet. Are we sure? We talk about Steph fucking Curry. <laughs> Are we okay? I'm, I don't, I want to have a conversation about him, Trey Young. He, he is he is he, he he's better than Dame? This is what we're saying. He's better than Kyrie. No, surely this is what we're saying. You know what I mean? It's too early to we're judge that. We're tripping. I mean, it's it was the one. It, I'm not going to just go, go here and say this. It the should one be. Year. It it's, should be. Is he a top five point guard? Which yeah. I think he. It, it also it's, uh, it also should be what a lot of the conversations are. Would you put him in a, in a is MVP conversation? USA? No, he's not. They didn't take him, which is ridiculous. Halliburton on that team. They added Kawhi as the last guy. That's okay, but Halliburton on that team is not okay because Kyrie's not going to be on that team. I don't think, and neither is Jalen Brunson. Right, Jalen's not on it. If they took Kyrie over Jalen Brunson, I'd be okay. That's a fucking problem. But yeah, that's a fucking yeah, that's a fucking problem. I think Jalen Brunson is better than Halley. I think that's a conversation that we could have had this year. I think Jalen Brunson is clear of Halley. We got to chill with this, though. This is fucking wow. I mean, wow. And I guess Kendrick is ready to have that conversation. No, he's not. If he's tweeting that. No, he's not. Because Jalen Brunson isn't ready for that conversation. Yeah, I don't think Jalen's ready to have that conversation. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> we got to let people have good years, man. More on Jalen Brunson. Yeah, like, can we just let people have good years? I'm not reading all of this stuff on this from Tommy Beer on Twitter. I'm not reading all this here, but... Uh, we're going to read a couple. Jalen Brunson finished the 2023-2024 season with more points than Nikol- Nikola Jokic and Jason Tatum, more assists than SGA and Dame, more three points than Anthony Edwards and James Harden, more free throws than Jimmy Butler, and more made free throws than Jimmy Butler and Kevin Durant, okay. and more 40-point games than Embiid and Donovan Mitchell. I don't like the Embiid stat because we know he was out. I'll take the last one, too. I will take this last one. This is what we're doing? More charges drawn than James Draymond Green and Nick Alex fan? Caruso. Is this a Nick fan? Is this a Nick fan? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That MB one was wild. <laughs> that was wild. Yeah, the, the MB one is a little bit of a stretch only because we know MB didn't play. Um, <laughs> but take this one, too. <laughs> Higher three point percentage than Luca and Duncan Robinson. Bro. Bro. Do we know how those guys shoot three point shots? <laughs> I know. I think we're stretching a little bit. We're doing a lot. We're stretching a little bit. Very good engagement. Good job. Yeah. How to write a tweet 101. Yeah, that was very good. That was 101. Very, very this might well be written. this might be 200. This might be 200. Yeah, Tommy Tommy Beer. This might be a 200 level class. I can't lie. Bottom line from that though, is great year. Just to say, put some fucking respect on him. I mean, we've heard all year long he can't be the one guy, he can't be the leader guy, he's not going to be the best on the court. And even still we're having this conversation. Like like I was telling you before we got started, where Kendrick Perkins and us, first of all, Austin Rivers is the one that started the conversation with Malika and Andrews as the host, and he's asking who's the who's the one or one A on the court? And well, in the Sixers Knicks series, and Perk says Brunson and then That's so Rivers crazy. says Brunson's 1A, but that I can't is, say that because that Embiid's there, so I can't cr- give Brunson like the number one. 1A is crazy. My problem is, I don't... <gasps> I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Jalen Brunson fan. I don't like that we're having this conversation every second we get of who's the 1A? Who's the best on the court? Who's number... Why don't we just... How this game is played out, I don't care who's the best on the floor. Did they win the they game? They are literally saying that Jalen Brunson is a 1A with Joel Embiid on the court at the same time. That's we are doing a lot of drugs, man. I'm really I said it like two months ago. I'm just really sick and tired of this talking down on Jalen Brunson. I, I don't understand it. Because they keep putting they put him in these conversations, these dumbass conversations. Julius Randle has not been on the court. Why are we putting him in conversations with Joel Embiid? Damn near three months. But like what are we doing? Like we're putting this is why he's talked down on. We're putting him in conversations with Joel Embiid and Steph Curry. The fuck are we doing? <laughs> yeah. The fuck? Can we just can, like why can't we just let people be great? 
We didn't put SGA in any conversation this year, except for MVP. Like, why? Do I we, agree with you there. Like, why do we have to do shit like this? Like, that's that's why it happens. And then and then the people get haters off of this. I don't like it because I try to. I mean, I try to be real. I love Jalen Brunson, Nova guy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Part of the buddy crew. I seen his girl. And <laughs> like, he's one of us. Like, I like Jalen Brunson. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't following you for a second, and I got it. <laughs> and I got it. Um, okay, so as so this show, for those that don't know, I'm a Knicks fan, and Manny is a Sixers fan. So it's just, I texted him last night, and I said it's on fucking site. It's on site. So this is going to be a big series for the program, big series for the friendship. May lose a friendship after this series. I, mean, I don't know what the fuck's nah, going to happen. I'm not stressing, bro. I mean, I, I mean, my team's own this fucking show at the moment. I mean, my team's clear on this show at the moment. It's not even close. It's 3 1. I'm just telling you. It's 3 1, respectfully. Like uh, at a Philly sports, you mean? Yeah. You're not. Who, who's the one? The Rangers. You're k- taking the Phillies? Yeah. We went to the fucking. What? We went to the fucking <laughs> pennant in the World Series while we're on the show. What the fuck are you talking? You guys didn't make the playoffs on this fucking show. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? That's true. That's true. I'm still taking the Knicks. What? I'm still taking the Knicks. I'll go two two. I'll give you two two. I'm fine. I'll give you the fucking Phillies. I'll give you the fucking Phillies. I will. You can have the Phillies. Yeah, it's fucking three one. That was dumb. <laughs> you want to do fucking? You want to do fucking soccer too? No. Then it's fucking four one. No, it would be four one, but I'm not even going there. All right. Um. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to build a series winner parlay for the first oh, round of the NBA playoffs. Now again. Just to preface everything, well, this is a Thursday before the, our last play-in games, so we don't know some of the rest of the uh, matchups in the West. But those would be series that are too like those are pretty probably too long to make it part of the, like you know be interesting. Yeah. So, so why don't we just take it right from the top here? Cleveland Cavaliers and Orlando Orlando Magic series winner. This is so fucked. You got the Cavs at minus two hundred. You got the Magic at plus one sixty. Where do we want to go? Can we skip this? Can we come back to this and see if we want to add this in the parlay? Okay. Fine. Can we just come back and see what, how juicy this is? Because I, I fucking hate that I have to pick a team in this series. I actually hate that. Fine. Okay. I'm sorry. Moving on. Moving on. The I copped out. I'm beta. Minnesota Timberwolves against the Phoenix Suns. The Timberwolves are plus 110 and the Suns are minus 130 this to win so the series. Fuck. This is so fucked. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I didn't realize how hard this would fucking be. I want to take the Timberwolves at plus 110. No. We're taking the Suns. I'll give you that one. Fine. We're taking it, and 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 I and, and I, I really want to take it, bro. That's why I want to take it. I really want to take it. They're saying Cat's gonna play and all that, and everything's gonna be. Ah, I don't know. I like how the Suns have looked, especially some of the role players. I like how Grayson Allen has looked. KD's looked tremendous on the defensive end. People aren't talking about that enough at all. Like KD could, I think, could have been in the defensive player of the year conversation this year. How well he's played defensively, and obviously. Coming off an Achilles tear, he has bumped up every single one of his offensive stats, which is an insane achievement. And I think the Suns are a story this year that people aren't ready to have because it's that super team team thing and people don't like that. I think they make people realize in this playoffs that, yeah, yeah, like we're still the Suns. So I, I think we're going to go to the Suns here. And I'm sorry. I really want to take the T1. That's fine. We'll take we'll I'm take sorry, we'll man. take the minus one thirty to get it started. Uh, this is gonna be a hell of a We're series. skipping the Knicks and the Sixers no, one. We're gonna come no. back to that one. Okay. And because I have a theory on that at the end. But we'll wait, wait for that. Uh, yeah, because we can't pick that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. But we'll, we'll wait for that for the end. Okay. Uh, over to the West now. The Lakers and the Nuggets. The Lakers are plus 270. And the Nuggets are minus 350 to win the series. Let's go, Bron. Do not. Let's bro. go, Bron. Let's go, Bron. Plus 275. No. Let's go, Bron. Oh. Let's go, baby. And Mike Malone was talking crazy. He said we swept them last year. We swept them this year in the season series. So them guys will come out hot. Don't do that. I'm doing it. D-Lo looks good. Fine. The Nuggets don't look like that this year, bro. I'm not scared of Nuggets this year. Not, no Booz Brown, no Jeff Green. A lot of value here. Just saying. A lot of value here. Okay, well, we, we will put the Lakers We're in. taking the fucking Lake Show to beat the Nuggets. Okay. And cry about it in the comments. On to the Bucks and the Pacers. The Bucks are plus 110. Oh my and the Pacers God. are minus 130 to win the series. Okay. So I don't, the Bucks? Remember, I don't know if you remember we did a show early in the NBA season and I said I would do 30 things to have this series happen. 
and it's happening, but Giannis is not losing. You're saying? I just want to. I want to see this happen. Like series happen. Yeah. But Giannis is fucking his calf. Right. And if you look at KD, I'm not going to say, but KD got fucked up because he pulled his calf, tried to come back on it. Mm-hmm. So how do they deal with Giannis in this series? I don't know. They've looked, but okay, they are three and seven in their last ten, and what they did in the last month of basketball was tremendously bad. Yeah, how are you? I'm pretty sure they were 33 and 19 at a point, and you end the season with 56 wins, 54. Like, I don't love this Bucks team. I don't love. I love the Pacers, but I don't love them in this. <sighs> My initial thought going into we, it was we were taking the Pacers at minus 130. That's where that I was. That was your initial thought? Yep, that's where I was. Because unless Dame cooks, which he's in a position to do so the have in the cooked, playoffs. The Pacers have cooked them this year bad. Yeah. I mean, this was a matchup. Dame don't even want to be there, bro. Like, I feel like it would just make sense for them to lose. Minus 130. Giannis got hurt. They have Glenn Rivers as their coach. We're taking. How can we take the Bucks? We're not taking the Bucks. We couldn't look at ourselves to say and take the Bucks. And you know what's funny though? There's there's some narrative bullshit that I've been seeing that says that they want the Bucks to win and then the Sixers to win. So it's Doc Rivers against the Sixers. We don't want to see that. We don't want to fucking see yeah, that. We don't want to see. Okay, that. Pacers moving on minus one thirty. And now what we go. What is this parlay at right now? Uh, we're at plus one thousand fifty eight, <sighs> and we still have two to go because we are leaving the Knicks and the Sixers out. Because if we lose because of the Knicks, then he's gonna be mad at me and I'm gonna be <laughs> mad at myself. And if we lose it. Because of the Sixers, then I'm gonna fucking kill him. And because we lost we, money, we don't need that. We don't need that. Okay, we talk about losing friendships. That's what we would have done there. Okay, moving on. Dallas Mavericks against the Los Angeles Clippers. The Mavericks are minus one twenty five, and the Clippers are plus one hundred five to win the series. Where are we gonna go, Luca? Or are we gonna go Harden? This is so <laughs> fucked because, bro, I like plus was, money for the Clippers. I was a big Clippers advocate this year until the end of it. I started having some hard in conversations. There were some sound bites coming out of some interviews from Paul George saying that's not his problem. I don't know if I love what I've seen from the Clippers coming down the stretch. And I have loved, loved everything I've seen from the Mavericks. Kind of since they got rid of Grant Williams. <laughs> no trouble. But Kyrie, people have not been talking about Kyrie enough at all because Luke is having another insane year. And Luke could easily win the MVP. And if they weren't shucking the schlong of a... Um, Luca could win MVP. I'm sorry. I, get I try not to hate on you, bro. But Kyrie, I think, like I said earlier in the show, I think him and Jalen Brunson is more of a conversation than people trying to do is Jalen Brunson fucking Steph Curry stuff. That one two punch is lethal. We seen Kyrie when he gets a... I hate to say LeBron type, but when he gets a LeBron type and it's in the playoffs, it's time to get a bucket... We've already seen what Luka can do on his own. With, with Jay, I mean, not on his own, but with Jalen Brunson. So, hey, let's see what, let's see what Kyrie does. We're having this conversation. I'm down to rock with the Mavs. I'm rocking with the Mavs, too. Minus 125. I, like, I, I think we got Podcast P. He's just known for it. Kawhi, he's just known for it. Yeah. Podcast P, I like that. Yeah, we got we to gotta take the Mavs. All right, taking the Mavs there. We are almost up to 2,000, and we are going to our last matchup, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Orlando Magic. Cavaliers are minus 200, and the Magic are plus 160 to win the series. Like, I I'm want, clenching my I fist because I want to take the Magic. Like, so extremely bad. Like, it just feels like it's the right thing to do. Like, I, when you look at this parlay and you just see the Cleveland Cavaliers in there at minus 200, like, that's just the leg you put in and you look at it and you just know, like, if I get cooked, it's going to be that. It's going to be them. <laughs> yeah. But but I just think there's something to be said about the continuity of this Cavs team. I'm pretty sure this is their third playoffs together. Magic, first time. They're my guys. I call them the Energizer Bunnies because they're young, ferocious, play fast, hard, but they're young. You're led by a sophomore. Not enough people, and first of all, not enough people are talking about how Paolo Bancaro has led this team to the playoffs in the, as a fucking sophomore in the NBA. Same with Franz Wagner. Not enough people are talking about that. Jalen Suggs is one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. Whenever he plays a top fucking perimeter guard, he has them in hell. Not enough people have talked about this Magic team, and I'll use this point to talk about them, but I'm taking the fucking caps. I like it. I like it. And I want you guys to watch this Magic team closely as they lose in the series 4-2. 
because we love this fucking team. And they're going to be a, a actual problem. Remember how it was Knicks and Cavs in those gritty series? I think it's going to end up being Knicks and Magic in some gritty series. And if it's not Knicks and Sixers, but I'm sorry, Magic. I want to take y'all so bad, but it's going to be the Cavs. I'm with you on the Cavs with the experience factor. As a Can you get one me too. one time, D Mitch? You said they judge you off making the Eastern Conference Finals in the finals. Can you just give me one time? This is juicy. To round out our parlay, we have plus 3,027 odds. $10 what does 20, when you throw What does $20 give us? $20 in this parlay would pay out $605.41. I think we should just split that. That is the all day, everyday show. <laughs> First round series winner parlay. Yeah. We hope you tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I can't believe we finally made a parlay together. It's like a smacker to me. Let's I just fucking wait, 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 like wait, it. one second. I mean, we're not including this in that clip there, but let's just see if like what that would do to it. Okay. We have to! A grand! We have to put a no now we have to do it. Get a coin. Get a fucking coin. We gotta get a coin. We need a coin. I need a coin. We get a coin. <laughs> we have to do it, bro. A grand. Alright, let me go get a coin. You know how many T we can do with that? Wait, you have your phone. Just do it all series. You know how many T parts you can do with that? You, you, you have your phone. We're gonna flip a coin. Hold on, we're we're flipping a coin because the the Sixers and the Knicks are minus one ten each. So we're gonna flip, and I'm a six, Knicks fan. Knicks fan. He's a Sixers fan. So we're gonna flip a coin to see which one we're taking because both of them are minus one ten, and this would make the odds plus fifty eight seventy, and twenty dollars would win almost twelve hundred bucks. So we're gonna flip a coin and see who we take. Ask Siri. And put the put it on the on the mic so they, they can hear. And and sixes or heads, next to tails. Okay. Siri, heads or tails? <laughs> I just played all of me by John Legend. <laughs> no 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 no. Say say Siri, flip a coin. Siri, flip a coin. It's heads. So we're taking the Sixers. It's heads. Fuck. Okay. We're taking the Sixers. Okay, so twenty dollars. I wanted her to say it. Like, why didn't she? I don't know. Why she said it like dramatic on me. I know. Yeah. Like, okay, she played so all of me. Like, what the Sixers go in the parlay on the heads call because we do, we're not trying to get greedy there. Oh twenty dollars for wait, wait, almost twelve hundred. We can get the mics. Yeah. Tea parties. Yeah. We might be able to put some shit in the pot of the all day open. Yeah. Yeah. Let's lock it. I'll split, I'll send you ten bucks. And you know what's gonna happen? Is like, I'm just not gonna be rooting for the Sixers, though. No, you can't. It's no, you happening. no, you can't. It's no, you, not happening. You can't. I, I, I the, the probably could be for ten grand. Like, I just, I want you to kick shit on that. Yeah, unfortunate, bro. Yeah, you're gonna have to hope. You're kind of gonna have to hope we get cooked somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Which is unfortunate. Sorry. And but we could win twelve hundred. Most likely be the Cavs. We could win twelve hundred dollars. We could. We could. It probably would be the Cavs. It would. It would really would be. I bad. think the Cavs, and I think. The Suns is scary. The Lakers, bro. Oh, that's a lock. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fucking lock. I'm, I, not, I, I'm not worried I, about Brown. That's your pick, and I'm trusting <laughs> I'm you on that. All right? <laughs> I'm going to trust you on that. I'm taking, I'm taking no slander from that pick, okay? It's now my pick. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Let, let's just not get that twisted up. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're briefly going to touch on the NHL here, and then we're going to get the fuck out of here. Um, I was going to skip these, but I'm no, just, no, 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 no. just going to stay because this is pretty cool. So <laughs> the... We're calling them from BR Open Ice here. We're calling them the Cardiac Wings because they were they had their last two games against the Montreal Canadiens. One they were away and one they were home. And they needed to to win out to give them a chance and they needed some help from the Capitals losing. They needed the the Penguins to lose. They needed the Flyers to lose. Um, they they needed a lot of things oh, to happen. So the scenario that the Flyers did, and we and our fucking dumbasses couldn't do it. Nice. Okay. So if the Capitals ended up losing that game, the Red Wings would have got in. But this is how crazy it went. So in their first game, this was Monday night. They were tied with one seventeen left in the game, which is the second to last game of, of their season. And then they tied it with one seventeen left, and then they won in overtime. They were down four two late in this game, and they were able to come back and they pulled their goalie and just found a way to get the puck in the net. And then they ended up winning in overtime. They got those two points that they most desperately needed. And then they go to uh, Montreal, and they play their final game of the season. Montreal was up again, and they tie it. The Red Wings tie it with 3.3 seconds left in the game, which was their very last game of the season, and they ended up winning in a shootout, which gave them another two points. The big factor was 
at it was a span of three minutes at like nine thirty four and nine thirty five, they scored that goal to tie it. They went in the shootout. Like a minute later, it was nine thirty five or nine thirty six. Flyers pull a goalie because they needed to win the game. They could not go to overtime because it would give the one point to the Capitals and make it out of reach for the Flyers. And the Capitals score the empty netter, meaning they were going to win the game and that boots the Red Wings out. But I just wanted to talk about that because they did everything that they could. And everything that they had to do that was when the ball was in their court, they did. And it just unlucky. So good season for them. Red Wings always find a way to, to get gutsy and try to get in the playoffs. Original six team would have been cool to see them get in there. Um, That's so poverty that you had to say that about them. They're just such a gutsy team that they're always trying to get in the playoffs. What do they sound like? They sound like the Giants. Well, they're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. They're not trying to get in the playoffs. But good season, Detroit. I know you got Patty Kane this season. Wish he came oh, back to New York, shit. but he will not be on the ice in the playoffs this postseason. Damn, no ice out of Patty Kane. No. And we head over to Arizona. The Arizona Coyotes. They. Sadly, make their departure from Arizona. Their last game at home brought out team employees to join them on the ice. I thought that was very cool and special out of them. Um, I got to move this angle up. What the up. fuck does that say? What's that? That is trending on my screen right now on the right side. Tony Romo? No. Oh. Let's just not. Oh. <laughs> let's, just, let's move on from that. I don't know what that is. I'm not clicking on that either. Can you please screenshot that and put it in the fucking... And put it in the fucking... What the fuck? Oh, the internet's good, bro. The internet's, the internet's really good. <laughs> okay, we're going to move past that. <laughs> really um, yeah, so the Coyotes and uh, their team employees, they had them out on the ice to enjoy this last kind of final moment. The team desperately needed to get out of Arizona, playing yeah, in a college arena. fucking lockers with 18-year-olds. Yeah, I mean... It was not a good spot for them. The fans were thankful for what they had, but I think they respected that it's time for them to get out of here and these players need to get in a, a professional Ooh, type atmosphere. Where, where do the Suns play? In proximity to where do they play? See, that I don't know. The fuck y'all play where they play? Yeah, that I don't know. The big thing is like, so they're going to Salt Lake City, Utah. We're waiting oh. on a name. Okay. It's very oh, close. They're changing, oh, they're changing cities. Yeah, Salt Lake City. Utah. They're going to Utah. That's hard. So now I did see a tweet. I don't know how true this is, but they're talking about it's not going to be anything related to Salt Lake City in the name. It'll just be Utah. Uh, so Salt Lake would have been hard. Figuring out it's going to be new new team name, new colors, whole, all nice. that. Um, and they just, bottom line, they just had to get out of there. I saw Biz on the TNT crew talking about his time when he played in the NHL. He was on the Arizona Coyotes and kind of what it meant for him to be there. That's where he spent his career. So uh, it, it was it was definitely cool. It was heartwarming to kind of see that even though no one really talks about the Coyotes because they're not good, that they had a lot of love and respect for that organization as they leave. The Arizona Diamondbacks actually tweeted a statement today just thanking them and saying, you know, we're sorry that our city wasn't able to kind of help you out a little bit and, and keep your team there. So... <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, it's another team lost, but we didn't give a fuck about y'all till y'all did what y'all did last year. Fucking weirdos. Yeah, I, I mean, I had to do that. On to like much better things for this franchise as they move to Utah. So can't wait to see what the logos are look like and and the jerseys. Like, what if it's like a like Utah Jazz is like that yellow, green, purple type kind of thing? Like, maybe I mean, just curious to see what those would look like. And then lastly, we get to. The New York Rangers, who start their playoffs on Sunday at home against the Capitals. One thing I do want to mention about this Capitals series is the last three times that these teams have met in the playoffs, the Capitals and the Rangers, it has gone to seven games back-to-back-to-back times. And the Rangers have won back-to-back-to-back times. Now, the narrative is, well, let's not look past the Capitals. Let's not look past the Capitals. And it seems like they're putting a lot of pressure on the President's Cup winners, like they did last year with the Boston Bruins. What happened to them? See ya very early. So this unwanted pressure is not what I'm liking. This is, don't put any extra pressure on us. Wash your hands. Pat yourself off. We go to round two. This should not be any more complicated than it already has to be. Five games, get it done, move on. You guys are clearly the better team. Move on. 
I'm, I'm not even thinking twice about this because I don't want to scare myself. And this stat here, feeling like 1994, are we now? Are we now, New York Rangers? In the 93-94 season, the cup winners, New York Rangers, had 52 wins. They won the pre- President's Trophy. And they won the Stanley Cup. Well, here we are in 2024, 30 years later. Rangers had 55 wins. They won the President's Trophy. And now we're waiting on the Stanley Cup. That's so sad. You guys got to go back to like 94 to compare a team. Isn't it crazy? Sounds sad. So like, let me get one. Just let me get one. I haven't been fucking alive I'm, for a Rangers I'm cup. trying. They aren't. Like, come they, on. They're not trying. This is it, okay? <laughs> they're, they're all saying that the window's closing for the Rangers. So let's not close it just yet, okay? We still got the playoffs. All right? So I'm very excited for that. You're not scared, you're not scared of the Caps yourself? I'm not scared of the Caps. It's definitely going to be a gritty series just because it always is with those guys. Over under six games. It better not be. I'm taking the under. I would like this. This better be done in fucking five games. Do not make this harder than it has to be. Remember two years ago when they had their dog fight with the with the Lightning? It was seven games against Pittsburgh. We go to Lightning for, I think that was that six was game fun. series. That was fun. I mean, they were going to end up having to go to the Colorado Avalanche, who ended up winning that year. They were going to have to go to Colorado and get their dicks kicked in. Playing like on almost two days of rest in 13 days because they had two seven game series. Like, that's the other thing. And then. What makes this so much better for them now, meaning the New York Rangers, is they got the pre- President's Trophy. We got home ice the entire way. I mean, these are just, like, the, the dots. I can see the dots connecting. I can see the puzzle pieces getting put together, which form a Stanley Cup. Lord Stanley, bring him to New York. All right. Very I'm simple. down to go to parade. Yep, me too. Act like a groupie. Yep. Shout out to my boy, Nikita Kucherov, too. Mm-hmm. 100 assists. Goat. Just, you know, uh, and- Connor McDavid as well. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, he is actually the GOAT. It's unreal. All right. Um, we are going to close this show with our first caller the of phone call? the show. Okay? Not a phone call. Not a phone call. Via Google Voice? <laughs> yep, Google Voice. Oh. Uh, you can call the number if you want to get on the show before we listen to this call. Call 302-722-6699 if you want to be a part of this show. We Whoever, will to whoever called in talking about you don't got no clothes and no money or something like that, what the fuck was you on, bro? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You can't use that, bro. <laughs> no, we're not using that. Can't, use that. can't even understand him, too. So, feels bad. All right, uh, we're going to listen to you uh, from Devin here. He's one of our boys. Let's see what he got to say. Here you go, Dev. Floor's yours, buddy. What's up, boys? It's Dev here. Long-time yeah. listener. First-time caller. You know how yeah. it is. Uh, listen, so I'm scrolling the FanDuel markets today, looking at uh, looking at some NBA props, and it's catching my eye that the, that the NBA MVP race is all but over. Nikola Jokic at minus 5,000. Now, yeah, totally I am it. one that doesn't want to give Nikola his flowers. You know, woe is me. You caught me red-handed. <laughs> Certified Nikola hater. Me too. But the fact that we're just looking past what Luka Doncic is doing on the Mavs this year, I mean, he's leading the league in scoring, second in assists. He's only behind all of Nikola's vorp and bullshit. His cock and balls rating is through the roof, <laughs> whatever. The difference in efficiency rating, as far as I saw, was three points. Now, for those of you that think that's a lot, you're right, it is. That's about the difference between Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic this year. Let's not forget that man was having the greatest season of all time. Oh, um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to be tapping uh, Luka plus 21,000. I see some guys in the media talking about giving him a vote. You know, crazier things have happened. That man is killing it. I don't think this race is cut and dry to this. Take care, boys. <laughs> I appreciate the call. First time caller. Uh, and first one that we got oh, on the show. Yeah. So, hey, he's on Luka. Um, obviously, and I know that you're not on Jokic's side either. No. So if you were going to take MVP, like yeah, be- so I, it's, actually, wise, it's actually funny we got this call because I'm in a hundred percent agreement. Like I took I took SGA plus eleven hundred like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, for MVP. So would you get that? Fanduel. Like, would you get it at eleven hundred? It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Jokic was like minus twenty one hundred or something like that. I don't know how their odds are still going up. I just don't understand like. I understand the Nuggets team's a little weaker, bro, but we got to take into fact that SGA's led the OK, OKC to the fucking one seed. Like, this young-ass OKC team. Like, yeah. if you take... We won this game for so long, but if you take fucking SGA or Luka off either of their teams, I don't even know if we're talking play in. The play in is stacked, by the way. Like, Steph ain't making it through the play So, I mean, we got to... I guess maybe the Nuggets, too. I don't know. 
I just don't. I, can we get some voter for like? Where's the voter fatigue? How's LeBron getting vo- voter fatigue? We don't get any vo- voter fatigue for this guy. He's <laughs> minus fifty five hundred. Like something's got to change, bro. Like I don't think is. I I think Fanduel don't want people to bet on it. I think he's smart for taking Luca. I think they want. I think they're trying to make that line and make people look at it and be like, oh, Luca, or, or Jokic won, and scroll past it. I think someone else going MVP. That's why I took SGA. So I think you're sharp, my boy. And that would mean that you would give Jokic another MVP. Me? No, I'm saying uh, like the books. Yes. Yeah. Essentially, that's what they're that's doing what they're saying, at yeah. minus five thousand. That's, that's what they're saying. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I'm, I'd be curious to see. Like, let's just see right now. Since we're on NBA here, at player futures. Right now, as today, that's finals. Damn, we can't even get. Here it is. Hold on. Where is our? Ah, I can't see it. I was just briefly going to see what it like what his Jokic odds were right now. I think it's my. I literally think it's minus. Hold on. I think I, minus five thousand is just still incredible. If that's what it is, is what I mean. I'm sorry, bro. I think it is minus. I mean, minus five thousand is ridiculous. Oh, they just took it off. I'm sure they did. I'm, I'm sure, sure they it's fucking minus did. Five thousand, bro. Well, as that that call was this time last week. No, that call was Friday of last week. So six days ago, and he was still on the board at minus five thousand. The Phoenix Suns are plus two thousand to win the NBA Finals. And I'm just not taking it. Oh, I gotta do it. You're gonna do that? Yeah. You know me. I I did the same thing for 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 football. I'm gonna take two. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the Suns, and I'm gonna take. I think I'm gonna take. Like, I can't take the Nuggets plus three hundred, bro. I can't take the Celtics plus one thirty five. One thirty five. I think I'm just gonna take the Suns, bro. I'm sweating. Real quick before we go. And the Lakers. I'm taking the Suns and the Lakers. Real quick before we go. Charles Barkley did say this on TNT this week in their pregame show. This was on uh, Tuesday night, and he was talking about the Sixers and the Knicks series, and he said, if I'm the Sixers, we just have to go win that one game. We got to win one game in New York. It's over. And it's over. he wasn't saying it's over. He said, I, we win that one game. He says, and then he says, you know, I know it's the Knicks, and I know we're kind of downplaying them a little bit. It's unfortunate what's happened to them. At least somebody said it there instead of just, like, blatantly shitting on them. You know, for Randall, he's talking about um, and, and OG, obviously. And OG, yeah. um, and then he says, and he, he includes Mitchell Nat, who was gone for most of the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then he says, and I think it was, might have been Kenny or Ernie, one of them cut off and said, conference finals. So he says, if they win that one game and they have the leverage, they're not only going to beat the Knicks, but then they're going to go on and beat whoever's next. That's asinine. And then they're going to go to the conference no, final. No, 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 we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I do, what I saw, if it, we would need Joel Embiid at 100% to get to the conference finals, and he's at max 70. I think it's good because it, it's making him play a little bit more within himself. He, he tried to get away from it last night a little bit, but he's, he's facilitating a little bit better. So I think other players take over. Like you saw, it was Nick Batum taking over. Like I think other guys, we had, we're a way deeper team, a way way better coach team. So I think for this situation, we actually it is it is good for us, but I think – Regardless of the team, the situation, just who Joel Embiid is, his usage rate, how much you run the offense to him, you need him at 100% to make the conference finals. If we were to make it to the conference finals with Joel Embiid at 70%, I've talked a lot of shit about that man. I mean, I love him a lot. It's why I talk a lot of shit about him. And I think he should have hoisted a couple trophies already for the Sixers. It's why I talk a lot of shit about him. But if he made the conference finals this year, bro, I think he deserves a fucking statue. thousand percent. And what's going on with his fucking knee? Hurting it again, like bro, he deserves a fight. So if he did that, he would. But I, I, I don't think it's possible with him at seventy percent. I do think he hoists a couple trophies in Philadelphia before he leaves. Though I think he's that fucking good, and I, I think he's still getting better, which is insane. Like I said, I'd be curious to see what the season would have been like for him if he didn't get hurt. We like would have been one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen in NBA history. And no one has made a comment on that since. And we were saying it on this show when it first happened. Just remember the numbers. You know, I wish I had the numbers available, but remember what those numbers were, okay? It's like 36, 12, and fucking 7, I think it was. Six and a half. And then Sixers were almost out of of a playoff spot. Almost. I mean, we would have been the two seed. This would have never happened. You would have been in the clear. You would have been looking at second round. Sorry, bub. That's crazy talk. But yeah, we would have probably been... Going home, but we're cashing 1,200. I'd say four. Three, you think they get three? Be them in the Magic. Who, the Knicks? Yeah. Yeah. They'll Give probably me. get three. That'd be them in the Magic? No, it'd be them in the Pacers then. Mm-hmm. Pacers are six. Y'all would have smoked them. I guess we're going to see who's going to go to the second round. 
We'll and we're going to see if we make some money or not on a little first-time parlay for the show. All right, that's all we got for you guys. We're going to get the fuck out of here. Uh, if you watched on YouTube, make sure to drop a like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. Our audio platform listeners, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, you drop know we appreciate Drop the call number. Yeah, call in, guys. If you want to be on the show, call the number 302-722-6699. We just listened to our first caller. Cannot wait to listen to plenty more um, and start having those debates and conversations with each and every one of you guys. So if you want to keep supporting us, drop us a call. And we're going to be talking to you guys for the remainder of, of eternity at this point. Uh, and then Apple Podcasts and Spotify, you know we love you. Drop those ratings. They mean a great deal to us. We don't need to shout out social media because you know, guys know how to find that out. We got playoffs on both sports. Let's go, boys. Knicks, Sixers, Rangers, Capitals, MSG is going to go nuts. You've been listening and watching to the All Day Every Day Show with All Day AJ and Manny Ruffin. We will see you after the first couple games of our NBA and NHL playoffs.